everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I am in the process of uh, refinishing my cabinets in the kitchen and the doors that we have, let me show you what they look like. This is uh, this is what our, our door used to look like. Um, it was actually this dark finish, like this molding on the side. But basically it's a three quarter inch plywood panel with uh, some recessed molding that runs around the edge of it. It's pretty plain looking. And when I got to refinishing the doors, it's very difficult to sand this to get this finish stripped off of here. So I decided I would just take the molding off, just strip it off and maybe change the style of the door to make them, you know, look a more look more modern and more appealing. So what I ended up doing was making some doors that look like this. It's kind of a shaker style with an arch at the top. And this is the same panel. So I, I stripped the molding off of all of them and then I took the, the plywood panel and I sanded it down with 60 grit to strip the finish off of it. And then I went over it with a 150 to uh, smooth it out, make sure everything was smooth on it. And, and I built this framework to go around it. Now normally you would use like a, a three inch by uh, one or something like that and use a dado blade to recess this to put it on. But I really don't have that capability. I'm using a radial arm saw. I don't have a dado blade for it. I don't have a table saw. So I'll show you what I used and I think it's, it's turned out pretty well. Let me show you one of the finished doors. So this is one of the doors that I have already finished. So I built it, sanded it, primed it. I used Sherwin-Williams multi-purpose latex primer. And then I coated it with uh, the Sherwin-Williams urethane trim enamel, the emerald. And man, that's really good paint. It's highly recommended by people on YouTube. That's where I got it from. And I'll have to say I recommend it also. The finish comes out really good. So I did three of these up front before I did all 27, I have 27 doors. So I did three of them to test to see how it comes out before I put all the work into doing all the doors like that. So I thought it turned out pretty well. I just want to share it with you how I built them and uh, maybe give you some inspiration for something simple you can do to change the look of your cabinet doors if you're thinking about uh, refreshing them. All right, now the workhorse of my operation is gonna be this old uh, Sears Craftsman radial arm saw. Um, I do most of my work with this. I'd like to get a table saw at some point, but right now I'm just using the radial arm saw. And our other piece of power equipment I'm using is a, a router table with, a, I have a Ryobi router on a Bosch table. It's a pretty decent table. I'm using a flush cut bit with the bearing on the end, and I'll show you how we use that later to trim a, the final profile, the arch for the cabinets. So here's, here's a video of some of the tools I use. I use the clamps. I use some letter stamps to stamp the number of the cabinet door on the back. So after I get them painted, I know where they came from. Uh, nail set, putty knife, a drill driver, a brad nailer with 5 8 inch brads. Uh, I use some needle nose pliers to pull out some of the old fasteners or if I mess up, I need to pull something out. A, tape measure and something to mark with. I use an air hose to kind of blow off the dust when I'm sanding and whatnot. A small hammer, some wood glue, I'm using tight bond. I got an old jigsaw to rough out the, the pieces with the arch. A Black and Decker quarter sheet sander. And that, that's pretty much the gist of what I used on this project. I, I may have left something out, I apologize if I did, but that's that's pretty much what I used. And I'm sure you can get by with less, but over the years I've collected, you know, different tools here and there. So without further ado, let's get on with the building. All right, so we're gonna to need to uh, rip down some 3 8 strips like this. Uh, the material I'm using is 3 8 thick, so I'm gonna rip it into 3 8 wide. So it will end up being a 3 8 square like this. Um, we're gonna need a lot of those for the sides, the, uh, the styles and the rails. So I have this, this is a pine project board. It's 3 8 of an inch thick by, you know, dimensionally six inches, not actually six inches, but uh, get these at Lowe's, it's like $4.70. Um, this is what I use to rip those out of and now we're going to go set up the saw and go ahead and rip those down. 
So now we got to set up the saw uh, to rip this lumber down. Let me show you how I do that. Raise this up. Now, at this point, we could just take a tape measure and set the blade to 3 8 But what I've been doing is taking a piece of lumber that I've already cut. I'll just put it behind that fence right there. Let the saw ease back on it. Go ahead and lock it down. We take that out and we're set right on 3 8 from the factory thickness of the, the wood that we had. All right, so let's go ahead and rip some of these down. All right, that's gonna do it for those. I think I have enough pieces now. All right, so I have the panel here we're gonna work on. We're gonna build this, this cabinet door here. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run over it really, really quick with the 150 grit just to make sure that uh, everything is smooth on this face because it's gonna be harder to sand this once we get the trim around it. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. Alright, right, the next thing to do is we need to measure to cut the uh, styles for the sides. When I measure this piece, we're looking at 15 inches, but I need 3 eighths of an overhang on the top, 3 eighths on the bottom, which is an additional 3 quarters of an inch. So that's going to put us at 15 and 3 quarters. All right, so the material we're going to be using to make the styles and rails is this 3 eighths by 3 inch by 3 foot appearance board or project board I picked up from Lowe's. These are about 3 bucks a piece. I, I like to look at both sides before I decide which side I'm going to cut because I want to pick the side with the least amount of defects to be the, the exterior surface. It will require less sanding and less prep work. But you also have to look at it to see how the wood's crowned. Um, this is actually crowned a little bit this way so I want that side up. Plus this is a, a very well finished side. Uh, it will require very little sanding. So. If you remember, we need uh, 15 and 3 quarters, so we'll go ahead and measure this out. Now, 
what I did there with the sander, I just used the sander to knock the splinters down off the back of it. See, this is how that's going to go. But we have a gap along the bottom here. And that's exactly what the 3 8 by 3 8 square strips we ripped her for. See these, you can take that, put these on here, and fill in this side. So, so that, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to need another 15 and 3 quarter inch piece. Cut it. You can see how that splintered. I just knocked those off with the sander. going to hurt anything but that's why we need to know which side we're going to use it's going to be up because uh, when I cut it it's not a real fine tooth blade when I cut it it kind of splinters on the back so I want to make sure that those those the side with the splinters is down and my best side is up so now we have each side cut we need to cut some 3 8 strips to fill in the back side now where we rip these strips from uh, they have some splintering on the edges and they're kind of rough so I just like to take some, this is an old piece of 60 grit sandpaper, but I'm just gonna use it to uh, knock the corners down and remove those splinters from the edges. So I'm gonna do this just the same way. We need 15 and three quarters. couple of edges on here. I'm going to lightly sand this with some 150. I actually think that 60 grit tore the edges a little bit more. It's not real important at this point to get the, uh, the, the faces of these really smooth because we're going to do a finish sanding once they're mounted to the door. Okay, let's take this panel and set it to the side for a second. Styles. <clears throat> and remember this is the top side so this is going to be the back side now what I, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the edge to figure out which is going to be my inside edge on here and I want to use the best one for the inside also because the outside is going to be a lot easier to sand and this is pretty rough cut on this this side so I'm going to make this the outside and this the inside so what we do here is we're going to apply some wood glue and then we're going to tack it down. Just a very light amount of wood glue. We don't need to gobber it on here. And at this point, it is imperative to get it as flush on the edges along this way as you can because that's going to require much less sanding. Now I'm using a brad nailer with 5 8 brads. I'm 
I'm going to continue working down the length of this piece, making sure we keep it flush to the outside. Now we got some glue working out. I just take my finger and just spread that glue down. On this inside edge, we have uh, some glue that comes squishes out. And I'm just going to take a a putty knife and just run it down this corner to get that out. We don't want a glob of glue to dry in there because it'll really make it difficult and get our sides uneven. Now one of these these brads didn't go in all the way, so I'm gonna use a nail set. Just push that on down in there. We'll go ahead and make the other one. And we're out. Right on the last one. Not sure if you know how you use these, but this is the the brads I'm using. Basically on this nailer I have, you just lay them in, close the slide. Very simple, quick and easy. All right. Get off any excess glue. Same thing on the inside. You can kind of see, I hope you can kind of see how the glue squishes out on the inside. You just need to clean that out. And now these side pieces are done. All right, so let's grab our panel back. We'll set it out here. We're gonna take our sides. You kind of see how this is shaping up. You see how this is gonna go. Now, I'm thinking of these cabinet doors as having a top and a bottom. This cabinet door is actually on the top. It's above your head. So this top edge will not be seen just when you're standing on the floor. The bottom edge, however, will be. So I'm going to take, pay more attention to finishing the bottom edges of these cabinets of the upper doors than I do the top. I'm not as concerned about the top because you won't be able to see it anyway. So first thing we're going to do before we nail these on is I want to take and sand this inside edge down before they're on and break this corner. We need to put a corner break on this because uh, it, it helps the paint to adhere. The sharp corner here could cause the paint to peel or, or maybe have some imperfections right there. It'll also be more easily damaged. So before we nail that on, let's go ahead and sand this down. I just take these and clamp it to the edge of my table and I have 150 grit sandpaper on here and we're just going to run the sander across here until we get a nice nice smooth finish on this edge. Now that, that has a very good finish on it here. Now we want to just kind of break this corner. I'm going to do that by just angling the sander from here to here to here to here, here, right on around and make passes right on around and kind of add a radius to that. It doesn't have to go all the way to the ends because uh, your rails are going to fit in here. And the sharper this corner is, where the rails go, the better, the less, the less filling we're going to have to do. So we have a nice corner break on that. We got, we got a really good corner break. I don't know if you can see it, but that edge is broken. This has been sanded nice and smooth. Uh, it'll be ready to just wipe down and paint when we get to that step. Now we just need to go ahead and do the other side. We're gonna do it the same way. 
It's very handy if you can come up with a setup where you can clamp pieces on edgewise like this, especially when it comes to doing the edges of the cabinet doors. This, this makes it really, really easy. Here we go. We have these two side pieces ready to nail on. Nice. Alright guys, so the next step is going to be to nail our sides on. Remember I said this is going to be the bottom and I'm going to pay more attention to the bottom. I'm going to pick the best edges on the bottom out of the two. make sure they go down and I think this is probably gonna be the best combination it's just like this so now all we have to do is we're gonna take this piece I'm gonna apply some wood glue all right so I applied wood glue to this side and now I'm just gonna take it and just kind of roll it on here like such this is the edge I'm worried about so I'm going to use a piece of stock and I'm going to bring this piece down until it makes a very nice flush edge with the factory finished thickness of this square piece at this point we can go ahead and tack it down I'm going to make sure this is pulled all the way in at the top we're using that as a pivot point we're going to nail it down Alright, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, except now my bottom edge, I have it facing this way, so I have to keep that in mind. I'm going to apply some wood glue, and we're just going to roll it on here, make sure it's down. Use my piece of stock. I know my hand's getting in the way, but I'm using my stock to get this thing lined up on the edge where I want it. Make sure it's pushed all the way back up against. Put one pin in. Come down here to this end. We're going to pull it back. And we're going to tack it down. At this point, it's ready to just nail in. Now, one last thing to do on this, turn it over and look and see what glue we got pushed out. We're gonna use our putty knife again and just get this glue out. And on the other side. All right, so we got our sides put on. You can see here. We're going to need to cut one for the bottom, put it on here, and across the top we're going to cut the, a wider one that has our arch profile in it. And once we do that, get it in there, I think it's going to look pretty nice. Stay tuned. <laughs> 